It's Anecdote. Hello, my dear buddies. Quantum computing is the use of certain concepts of quantum physics, such as superposition and entanglement, to perform various types of computations. And today, we are going to take a deep look into it. But before we start, please subscribe to this channel and tap the bell icon so you never miss a single update. Quantum computing started during the early 1990s when physicist Paul Benioff proposed a quantum mechanical model of the Turing machine, which was a revolutionary idea which brought about drastic changes in the world of physics and maths as we know it. Famous physicist Richard Feynman even suggested that these new concepts had the potential to stimulate things that classical computers could not even imagine. Currently, now, a lot of major companies such as Google and NASA are investing in quantum computing research. Recently, they were able to perform a computation that is impossible on any standard computer, and this is known as quantum supremacy, where a classical computer cannot perform a computation which a quantum computer can in a short period. Now, I guess you have a question that what's the difference between a standard computer and quantum? So here's the answer. The current computers use binary, which is ones and zeros to perform their tasks. Quantum computers, however, can use a phenomena of quantum mechanics and they store their data on quantum bits or simply qubits. So how is it going to help us? As mentioned before, quantum supremacy is achieved using quantum computers. Along with that, even basic tasks such as solving linear equations that conventional computers can perform are sped up using quantum computers. Quantum computers also perform other functions, like quantum search using complex algorithms, quantum simulation, and quantum annealing, along with adiabatic optimization. But it's not that easy. There are a lot of hurdles, both technical and physical, when it comes to making quantum computers on a big scale. They have to be physically scalable to accommodate the required number of qubits. Even finding parts for quantum computers is challenging. The ones presently made needed superconductors, which are made by only one Japanese company. Quantum decoherence is another major hurdle that needs to be overcome while building quantum computers. Quantum decoherence is the damage to the computer due to interactions with the external world. It causes the computer to lose its quantum coherence, and to reduce this, the system must be isolated from the surrounding environment. Other sources of decoherence can be quantum gates or lattice vibrations. The main reason quantum decoherence occurs is due to the environmental temperature. Qubits need to be kept in an isolated environment. The reason is that even a little disturbance to qubits due to even a fraction of change in the temperature causes the decoherence to occur. Qubits must be kept at temperatures of the sub-zero level. This is a feat. That is extremely hard to maintain. What scientists have achieved as of now is to align 70 qubits as a maximum record on one single chip. Time and again, we come across huge setbacks. As a society of advanced beings in terms of intelligence, we are always in the mindset to grow and improve our assets. At the time when we have our backs on the opposite of the wall, we are trying to improve ourselves. Moore's Law this hypothesis states that humans would reach their limit in the development of the computer applications and sciences because the number of bits fitting into a silicone chip would exponentially increase every year. Now, after introducing quantum computing, this has been overcome. Even a few thousand quantum bits or qubits have the processing power of silicone chips having millions of bits on them. But to think that we are limited to quantum computing right now is just wishful thinking. As we have always overcome our difficulties in the past, we will also be able to surpass the thresholds in quantum computing, which is limiting us right now. Quantum computing is one of the world's most innovative ideas, which will revolutionize the whole of society as we know it. But that is not the limit of humanity. Quantum computing is just another milestone towards the next goal for humanity as a whole. Our final aim is to create a perfect system of our society, one that can be considered as the utopia of humankind. We will always strive to improve ourselves as we still have. History will repeat itself, and we will surpass our limits. So guys, what do you think about this? Please drop your comments and let us know your views. 
If you like this video, tap the thumbs up. For regular updates, please press the subscribe button and ring the bell icon. Be curious, never stop discovering, and keep watching Anecdote. See you soon.